Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about graph theory. This is a big topic, so pay attention. What exactly is graph theory? Well, it's an important concept to com in computer science and also mathematics uh, that generally it is about how you can link different pieces of data together in a meaningful way. So it's sort of like a web. Now, when you think of the word graph, or graphs as you might have learned them in school, you probably think of pie graphs, bar graphs, line graphs, and so on from math class. Uh, in computer science, graph theory is probably most similar to line graphs, but not, it's not exactly the same. And I'll show you with an example in a second. Here. Uh, for our purposes, this is a graph here on the side. Our definition of the graph that we're going to use is a finite number of vertices they are each connected by a number of edges. Uh, in formal terms, you can define a graph as G, which is equal to the vertices and edges. Uh, note that ed uh, graphs can have different properties, that the edges could also be di directional, me meaning that they can only travel one way, as opposed to uh, the example I show you above, which d that does not show any direction, therefore you can travel along them in any uh, way. Now you're probably thinking, why? Well, why do we use graph theory? Why is it so important? Well, consider some different problems that in the real world that use different points that connect to each other. Suppose you wanted to travel to ten cities as quickly as possible without seeing the same city twice. Uh, what if you had to connect a huge network of people as efficiently as possible? Graph theory is considered to be of high importance to and for research into algorithms to answer such questions. There is one uh, well-known question about the traveling salesman, uh, such, uh, such that there's a map given of, of the salesman route that of all the cities that the salesman has to follow uh, and go to. And the salesman wants to be efficient about his travels and uh, travel uh, to them as quickly as possible without repeating the same city twice. You can look that up on your own time. Now I'm going to give you some different terms uh, for uh, using graph theory. Degree means well, if you have a degree of a vertex, that means that that's the number of edges that connect to that vertex. Adjacent means uh, that a vertex would be adjacent to another vertex if they are connected directly by one edge. An edge uh, would be adjacent to another edge if they are connected by one vertex in between them. A general theorem for you is that the sum of all the degrees for all the vertices of a graph is equal to two times the number of all the edges. Interesting, which is uh, useful uh, uh, for some calculation calculations that you might do with graph theory. Uh, here's some more terms. If a graph is undirected and there are no self loops uh, within it, which means that the edges that attach to the same there are no edges that attach to the same vertex from both sides, and there are no multiple edges, then the number of edges is always less than or equal to the number of vertices times the number of vertices subtract one divide by 2. All right. Uh, a simple path is a path from one vertex to another containing no vertex that repeats. A cycle is a path that starts and ends in the same vertex. A subgraph is a graph with some of the same edges and vertices of a larger graph. Okay, there's more. Trees uh, we've talked about trees in another video, but, but I'll go over here. Trees are technically types of graphs, where all the vertices are connected to the graph, and there exist no cycles in the graph. A forest is a collection of trees. A complete graph is a graph such that every vertice is connected to every other vertice directly. A, a, a property of complete graphs is that the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices times the number of vertices subtract 1 divided by 2. And a spanning tree is a subgraph that is a tree that and contains all the same vertices. Uh, okay, uh, well, uh, graph theory, as you can tell, is a very large, complicated topic. Uh, we've just covered some of the basic uh, uh, things uh, over uh, t today, just some of the basic terms and concepts about it. 
and to go over everything would take multiple vi videos and I don't think we have enough space on YouTube to fit it all in one video and you know universities and colleges across North America you can find full length classes that are dedicated only to graph theory which uh, should tell you uh, about how large this topic is what we've seen so far is just a basic understanding I highly recommend that you should take a class to learn more about the theory of graphs and the applications for it but now the fun part now that we know more or less what graphs are how do we implement them when we program well I'm going to show you there are two main ways to program a graph uh, the first I'm going to show you is called an adjacency list uh, this means you would have an array of linked lists, each list representing all the vertices connected to the vertex in the graph. And uh, the, the elements in the list would be all the other uh, ver ver vertices connected to that particular vertex. As you can see from this example here, uh, the first vertex I have is A, which is connected to B and C, which I have in the list. I have uh, edges the next vertex is B which is connected to A and C in the list and you get the idea okay a uh, uh, second ex uh, way of uh, representing graphs is in, in the adjacency matrix uh, if you know what a matrix is uh, from math classes you probably know that it's a basically a table uh, and uh, in, in programming it would be a two-dimensional array representing a matrix that stores zero in the vertex I if vertex I and J are not connected and, or one if they are connected and uh, none you can none, or uh, it would take some representation of that anyway uh, you can notice if you look at the diagonal line here that the uh, uh, matrix seems to be symmetric along that diagonal line, which is a interesting property which might help you program a more efficient algorithm for finding what connects to what. Now, there are some different uh, algorithms you can use to uh, in computer programming. Uh, there, there's a uh, algorithm called breadth uh, first search to uh, find all the vertices in a graph because if you were to f try to find all the vertices in a graph you can imagine well they're not in any partic particular order so how would you uh, if you uh, go from one vertex to another one how do you know that you have to go back and you have to somehow find them all without getting lost anyway this algorithm what it does it constructs a tree with all the vertices starting with a vertex that you choose to start with and it also starts with all, giving all the vertices a white label or a white color or s some other way to uh, represent that starting with the ver first vertex you enqueue it that means you create a queue uh, 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 add it to a queue uh, and then if it if there's a vertex in the queue you turn it to gray instead of white now you check for all the ver vertices that are connected to that one vertex and you enqueue them into the list and also turn them gray. When you've found all the vertices connected to the first one that you found, then you dequeue the first vertex from the list and you also turn it black. And then you repeat with the next vertex in the queue that you created. Now if you continue this uh, pattern again and again uh, for, until you eventually dequeue everything in the list, uh, you, you'll be done. Uh, also, if you find uh, c connected vertices that are not white, that means you've already found them bef already. Then you do not, not add them to the list because you don't want to re repeat yourself and go do this indefinitely. Uh, here's a basic uh, pseudocode uh, for it uh, to give you a general idea of it. As you can see, I enqueue with a starting vertex after uh, uh, giving them a c color white, uh, all of them a color white. I also would give them a, a distance. Uh, uh, to I, I can record the short the distance uh, fr from each uh, 
vertex from the original one. Uh, that's optional. Okay, moving on. Uh, another algorithm is called the depth first search. Again, you start at a vertex of your choice and you mark it as visited. Now, instead of uh, sort of checking all the vertices connected to that one, you just check for one vertex connected to the first. And if it's not been visited yet, then you make that the current vertex and mark that also as visited. And now you continue this again w with that current vertex and you check for another connected vertex and you continue until all the connected vertices are visited at which point you will go back to the last uh, current vertex you had and you'll keep going back and back until you eventually f go back to the ver very first vertex you found and yeah that's it here's a pseudo co code for it uh, it's not written directly in uh, Java like the first one was yeah, but it's uh, that doesn't seem too difficult. Uh, sorry, here when I say uh, call DFS, I mean depth first search. That means I'm calling upon the same uh, method again. Okay. Now another topic is a minimum spanning tree, a weighted graph. Uh, if, if a graph is weighted, that means that it contains numbers that represent weights for the edges of the graph. Uh, a logical uh, application of this, you can imagine a shortest path algorithm that also considers the distance between two vertices as opposed to the number of vertices uh, in between. A minimum spanning tree uh, contains all the vertices, vertices of a graph with the minimum weight uh, of the edges connecting them. How would we find such a tree? Well, there's an algorithm by a man named Prim, by uh, uh, Prim, who helps define a minimum spanning tree. And here it is. Okay, here's another question for you. Suppose you want to find the shortest path between two vertices. Well. Uh, this is an important question, uh, obviously. And uh, there is an algorithm by Jikstra. I hope I pronounced that right. That uh, helps find the shortest path uh, for each of the individual ver vertices all, all together. And it stores the distance uh, for e each uh, vertice, ver vertex. And here it is. Uh, uh, there's actually two different uh, methods here at work. Uh, but you, you can study them uh, later. Now, uh, I've showed you a bunch of uh, algorithms. Are these the only algorithms for these pro types of problems? Well, no, of course not. There are others ex exist and others are continu continually being developed and uh, found and researched. It's a, the graph theory is a really big topic. It's a vast field in computer science and mathematics. And so I highly recommend uh, to pursue, pursue this in further learning, practice, and study uh, to best understand it. it. It might be complicated, it might be large, but it is important. And it, you might find out it's worth your time. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope you learned something. Uh, thank you for watching.